Right at the film's start, we meet an older character who's just checked into a hotel. This individual, Nancy Stokes, comes into her room looking quite anxious. She's taking off her coat and keeps looking at her watch. At the exact moment, a young man named Leo Grande takes it easy at a coffee shop, occasionally checking his phone. Not long after, Leo gets up, gets ready to leave, and spends some time outside. Meanwhile, Nancy is trying to ease her nerves and goes to the minibar for drinks. As she's admiring herself in the mirror, she hears someone knocking on the door. When the people inside try to figure out who's there, it's Leo Grande. He notices Nancy is on edge and playfully kisses her on the cheek, reassuring her that they will have a good time. Leo then suggests they head over to his couch to chat about what Nancy would like to order, but Nancy quickly decides on a hot drink, eager to relax more. In conversation with the music, Nancy reveals that she feels self-conscious because the person is even more attractive in real life than in the picture. Leo confides in his enjoyment at work, interacting with numerous friends and going on adventures. Nancy fears the individual may be ashamed, but he insists he isn't. The main character confesses her wish for the moment is something she usually seeks. Nancy is very anxious, hoping she hasn't let the individual down. Without saying anything, Leo gives her a gentle kiss and offers her more to drink. Nancy expresses her dislike for waiting and the unpredictability of surprises. Leo realizes these feelings stem from a fear of rejection. Nancy acknowledges this and has never felt pleased with her partners or herself. Leo believes he can offer some advice on overcoming these feelings. However, the main character encourages him to use his efforts effectively. Nancy reveals that her spouse has been deceased for two years, adding a layer of complexity to the story. The main character also mentions her feelings of sadness and loss. She was her single and sole partner throughout her entire life. After revealing a lot about herself, Nancy quickly shifts her focus to the man, the protagonist, a teacher, believing there's an issue with him and he might be from a fragile social circle, considering his choice of profession. The man chuckles and proposes to return to her, pointing out there's no issue with him. As the story progresses, the protagonist becomes more assertive, suggesting they transition to a new partner. He recommends the protagonist's latest paramour take specific pills despite his younger age and personal reservations. He mentions his most elderly client was 82 and even found characteristics to admire in her. An awkward moment ensues when she inquires about his preferences, to which he coyly admits he's fascinated by her lips. He later compliments her neck before transitioning the conversation to more personal matters. Suddenly, the protagonist requests a moment for the changeover, asking for a light-hearted approach. In a change of outfit, the protagonist reveals a more casual attire, while the other character, caught off guard, remains composed. He has a tall and attractive position on the bed, yet the guy feels the burden of weight compelling him to snack on a chocolate bar and sip a bit of a drink upon Nancy's exit from the bathroom. When Nancy returns, Leo positions himself next to her, hoping to share a moment of passion. However, the woman finds the scent of the chocolate unpleasant, leading the man with a grin to offer a toothbrush to ease any discomfort while Leo is occupied. While adjusting her robe, the woman discovers an unfamiliar tag, and the man jumps in to assist with its removal. Unexpectedly, the woman decides to decline his advances, Leo pleading with her not to miss this opportunity she's been eyeing for a long while. The man confesses his reluctance to leave, stating his intense attraction to Nancy. Leo then suggests that the woman hide under the blanket and continue their conversation. Nancy inquires about the man's educational background and family, which leads to her mother's growing anxiety. Attempting to steer the conversation elsewhere, Leo hints that his mother is unaware of his occupation believing he works on an oil rig. Nancy, too, opens up about her family, sparking another round of conversation under the blanket. The main character thinks her son is pretty mundane, and she has had rough times with her daughter. The daughter believes her mother Nancy is too harsh, whereas the main character believes Nancy is quite firm, especially towards her daughter. Nancy starts discussing her job and the challenging circumstances that make Leo gloomier. He leans into the conversation, pointing out how her husband indulged in late-night gambling with her. Leo is surprised that Nancy and her husband stuck to basic games. He can see why the main character is cautious about taking part in night games. As a younger woman, Nancy recounts how she went on a trip to Greece with her parents and had a short-lived romance with a hotel employee. She describes the blissful moment when she felt the employee's touch in the car, but the mood was broken when the car started and they were forced to leave the next day. After Leo gets stuck in another long meeting, Nancy feels more accessible and starts planning a list of new board game ideas she wants to play. Leo goes through the list of games he's heard of 
and thinks some might be possible. Shocked by Nancy's statement, the main character reveals that she's keen on trying out all the services during one session. The protagonist shares that his rates are high, so it is simpler for her to attempt everything simultaneously. With a grin, Leo subtly suggests treating the heroine to the best service possible, but Nancy is against it, as they're focused on achievable objectives. The main character encourages Nancy to let go of self-criticism and focus on completing clearly outlined tasks. Their discussion is cut short by a phone call from Nancy's daughter. To ease the tension, the main character leads a dance for the heroine, discovering that her marriage is meticulously planned. It becomes apparent to the partner that Nancy is excessively strict. However, the moment of relaxation is again disrupted by another phone call. The partner inquires if the children have noticed the heroine's dissatisfaction with them. To relieve Nancy's tension, the partner offers to massage her. During the massage, Nancy requests a specific technique. Leo flinches when GFF Nancy strokes him after she asks if the mom is displeased with him, indicating he's uncomfortable. Nancy quickly retreats after revealing she's never had someone as appealing as him. Leo jokingly mentions his rigorous gym routine, stating that the man's physique is impressive. He encourages Nancy to check out herself in the mirror, playfully teasing her that she now looks beautiful. The heroine becomes more severe, and inquires whether Leo gave her a nickname, to which he confesses he invented it, making Nancy believe it was made up. Leo then reveals that his younger brother is serving in the military, so they don't see each other often. The man suggests they play a game of role-playing, but Nancy, feeling self-conscious, refuses. She wishes she had enjoyed her teenage years more, and is bothered by the idea of role-playing games. The heroine admits to correcting her students for wearing short skirts, believing they could bring trouble upon themselves. She asks if Leo has faced any issues because of his lifestyle. The man responds that he's proficient in many areas, including making love, so he charges people to talk to him. Leo advises the heroine to consider purchasing more sessions with him to help her relax or perhaps become a regular client. Nancy, annoyed, dismisses the idea. Thinking he's only trying to extract more cash from her, the heroine sticks to the first condition and then burst into tears. Leo soothes her and reassures her that each person has a unique requirements, mentioning one of his clients enjoys touching hands and watching shows, while another prefers a fast and silent game. Leo and the heroine realize that his offerings are in high demand, as everyone desires fun and doesn't care about perceptions. The IT guy reveals. He finds graphics of people smiling most inspiring. This exchange motivates Leo, and the heroine embraces the game. During their third encounter, the heroine continues her quest to learn about Leo's personal life, but he diverts the conversation towards the importance of the present. Nancy confesses she knows his actual name is Connor. This offends Leo, prompting him to storm out. Nancy, realizing her mistake, apologizes and explains why they can't truly know each other. The heroine suggests to talk to Leo's mom about his career, promising no shame in it. The IT guy opens up about his mother's reactions regarding his job. This honesty prevents the situation from escalating further. Everybody notices he's gone, leaving in shock as Nancy observes him as he collects his belongings. When Leo returns for his things, he is upset, particularly when the individual acknowledges his mother's abandonment at 15. However, there's a resentment towards this person for constantly feeling his mother's disapproval. Their fourth gathering occurs in a coffee shop, where unexpectedly, Nancy bumps into her old student, Becky, who has an issue with heroin. Becky thanks Leo for his visit and mentions she's vouched for his services among her circle. Nancy shares a personal secret, revealing that she goes by Susan Robinson and leads a mundane life. She sees Leo as her sole sense of adventure and freedom, acknowledging her centric behavior. She admits that she's been overwhelmed by the intense pleasure she's experienced. After apologizing, she clarifies that she feels distracted by the excitement, leading to a pause in her farewells with the individual. This moment is cut short by Becky's return, who informs her of how often she's been reprimanded for her attire at school by a girl who leaves after an encounter. Upon hearing this, Leo confesses that he once informed the girl's mother of his daughter's evil deeds. Leo shared his true profession with his brother. Despite the disclosure, he responded in a composed manner when a stranger mentioned that when he was 15, his mother caught him and his companions engaged in lewd activities. Leo attempted to reconcile with his mother for a month, but he realized that she was uneasy with him and harbored feelings of anger, leading him to part ways with her a few years back. During this time, he even encountered his mother, who walked by while out on the street. Nancy criticized the stranger's mother, arguing that Leo's behavior had never caused such a rift. 
When Becky approached the protagonist to apologize, she explained Leo's role and their connection. Nancy believed that experiencing joy was essential and encouraged the stranger to visit. He accepted the invitation wholeheartedly, and during their time together, Nancy introduced various activities from her list that they both enjoyed, including Leo playing with himself, which gave her a profound sense of accomplishment. Upon concluding their time together, Nancy expressed her gratitude to the stranger, stating that it was their final chance to spend alone. After this, she reflected upon herself in the mirror and saw herself for the first time without flaws, devoid of fear, and free from any emotional burdens, embodying true self-acceptance. Embracing your true self as your ultimate joy marks the film's conclusion, a heartfelt thanks to everyone who has joined us for this video.